Hello, I'm Gary Stearman, and this is Prophecy Watchers. We have an incredible guest today. His name is Tom Hughes, Pastor Tom Hughes. Uh, it's I've known you for a while now, and you're always doing something brand new. And welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Uh, Gary, this is just great being here. It's always good to see you, and always a great opportunity to be here at Prophecy Watchers. Well, you've got something to say, and, and I'll start by holding up this book. Your name is right on the bottom of the front cover. It's called Marking the Masses. And I think this book is as clear a book as I've ever read about what's happening in the United States and in the world right now. And I think all of us have a sense that uh, there are people out there who are trying to crash the system. They're trying to create a revolution so that they can bring in their new way of thinking. And this book really goes a long way toward uh, a biblical explanation of what they're doing. Yeah, and thank you also for that. It's encouraging. So my desire for the book was really to be able to put into uh, one format, one book format, and uh, just that, just what you said, an understanding. And it's really, it had to be deep enough for the seasoned believer who studies Bible prophecy to be able to go, I haven't seen that before, and to be able to connect all the dots at the same time. You have the gospel at the end of the book, and it's, it's engaging and simple enough for somebody who does not know the Lord that will be able to pick it up and realize this for the first time, it all makes sense. I can see how it's coming together. Now, the book begins with a conversation <clears throat> that took place many years ago, back in 1961. And I was so intrigued by that, that you set the scene. You have uh, um, several gentlemen seated in a room, and they start talking. And what are they talking about? Well, what happened was it, the book comes from a conversation I had with my dad. And my, it goes back to 1960, 61, 62. I was very little at the time, and my dad had told me the story a few times over the years. And, you know, after, a, you know, some 35 years ago, I uh, started really engaging in Bible prophecy, and the story that my dad told me resonated with me. And so a few years back, I decided I was going to do an interview with him. And I sat down, and I started recording the conversation, because I couldn't remember the names of the players and the people. And basically what it comes down to, in fact, there's a full video that goes with this too, but what it comes down to is my dad was, uh, he had gone to college. He had uh, gotten his master's in, uh, he was a metallurgist, he was in chemistry. And he was, one of his earliest, earliest jobs was working at a company called Teledyne. Hmm. And he was brought in in the beginning, and it was all these different tech giants. They were very small companies at the time. And uh, they became the big wigs, the, the fathers of the industry of the tech world as we know it, Silicon Valley, everything. And uh, there was a conversation that took place with my dad, and uh, he told me about it. And that's what, that is what uh, started the whole book process. Well, in the conversation, they begin to speak of, uh, of crucial times, if, shall we say. It, it's as though even back then they had some sense that there, was, there were changes in the works that would change society, change humanity, and they all come under the heading of technology. Now, technology today is, is scary. I got to tell you, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit afraid when I think about AI, when I think about thousands of satellites constantly tracking every human being on Earth, and uh, that little thing that we all carry around <clears throat> called, an, well, it's a sea phone, but it's more than a sea phone, and that's technology. Yeah, uh, it, it's fascinating. So my, what happened was, uh, with my dad, it was Henry Singleton and some others, uh, they're pretty well known, and he was invited to a party in the, uh, in the Bell area, area of Hollywood, up on the hills of, above Los Angeles. And at the party, uh, he said all, the, all these guys were there, the leaders of the different companies. And somebody came up to him. Uh, people from NASA were there, everybody, right? Uh, somebody came up to him. He said at the time, I couldn't remember who he was, but we were able to figure it out. 
And he said, you see, Jim, you see all those, it was at night, see all those people out there? Someday, we're going to be able to control every one of them. And my, I remember my dad telling me, he said, I, he goes, I had a very sinking feeling at that moment because I knew he wasn't talking just about Los Angeles, he was talking about the whole world. And the technology that they were already working on was going to have this end. So this is 1961. And you look at it, he said most of the people in the industry that he knew were, were wonderful people. They weren't thinking nefariously. Yes. But this one individual uh, did concern him. And, and that quote from that one individual that's in the book yeah. just, just is remarkable because it looks forward to where we are right now. And uh, in a few words, where are we? Because marking the masses, the title of your book, you've got the word mark in there, and that's a biblical word mm -hmm. that we're all very familiar with, the mark of the, of the beast as the Bible portrays it. And marking the masses is a highly technologically oriented system. And you talk about that. Yeah, uh, I do. I get into the whole system because, Gary, I believe that right now, every single person that's alive, whether a believer or a non-believer, you know, we're in this. And this entire system is being developed right now. Uh, one of my friends recently asked me this question, then he answered it. He said, hey, how long do you think, when Satan knows he's kicked out of heaven, he knows he has but little time, Revelation chapter 12, how much time do you think he, through his Antichrist, is going to set up, uh, take to set up the infrastructure necessary to get to the mark of the beast. And then he said, none. He's going to set it up all ahead of time because he knows he has little time. So we are living in that. And so what I wanted to do in the book was really walk people through the process, not just technology, although we deal with technology, right. uh, not mm -hmm. just climate laws and climate rules. I wanted to go through all the different aspects of what is taking place because, Gary, we are, we, we're living it. And when we think of things that are happening right now, so that's 1961. Uh, the COP26 meeting, the climate meeting in, uh, what was it, 2021, uh, Prince Charles, who's now King Charles, he, he has this quote that he makes, and he talks about we must use a military style of takeover of basically the, the civilization. He didn't say we're going to go in there with guns, but we have to go about this in this manner, like a warlike manner, to be able to control the masses of people. And then he says, and he has trillions at his disposal. I mean, that's what I heard. Some say he yeah. says trillions at its disposal, meaning the system. I've read his lips. I had to play it back in slow motion. It looked to me like he said trillions at his disposal, but nevertheless, either way, that's what they're doing. It's this military, military-like campaign to bring about this global system. Well, of course, marking the masses uh, is a reference to the, what the Bible calls the mark of the beast. And the mark of the beast is kind of a mm, kind of symbolic, kind of metaphorical, who's the beast anyway? We really don't know who the beast is. And people have talked about these things for years and years and years and say, well, I really don't understand it. Uh, I can't figure out exactly how all this is going to go together. Well, Tom, this book is showing us how it's going together. And I, I've got to tell you, it sort of raises the hair on the back of my neck when I think about uh, marking the masses, the mark of the beast, and, and how the system is being crashed right now before our very eyes, the global mm -hmm. system. Yeah. A and someone, and the Bible says who, is going to have to come in and fix it all up. Yeah, Mr. Fix-It, Antichrist. <laughs> you know, you yeah. look at it, there's so many different aspects that are going on right now. Te the technology to be here now, 1961, we, know, we understand that, we see Silicon Valley, get all of that. But not only is the technology necessary, I believe the whole thing, there's going to be a big collapse, a crash. Um, but something else has to happen, Gary, because I do not believe... Even if it was an economic collapse global, that wouldn't be enough to get people to sign up for the mark of the beast unless they were conditioned first. 
And so what we are in right now and have been in, it is a conditioning process. And as we look at it, we can see, wow, not just the last three and a half or four years. We can look at it, we can see, why are all these weird things happening right now? Yeah, the school system. I mean, you talk about crashing the system. The -hmm. school system's being crashed. So if, if you work it out with the school system, it starts to make sense. You have kindergartners being told, um, well, you're not really a boy. You're probably yeah. really a girl trapped in a boy's body, but we're not going to tell your parents. We're going to transition you. Now keep your mouth shut. And we see laws being passed, uh, governors, mayors, school districts, and it's happening the entire, the entire country. But it's a conditioning. So if you work that out, if they're in elementary school now, junior high now, all you got to do is work out five years or 10 years. The entire country of America, as we know it, has lost. It will be very anti-Christian, which can be alarming unless you understand what the Bible says about the hope we have. Well, I think you get the uh, the gist of the book by now, and we're going to, after we take a break, uh, to talk about our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher. By the way, uh, if you ever want to submit an article to The Prophecy Watcher, we'd love to print it. Oh, wonderful. I'd love to. <laughs> In fact, I know what you could write about. I, great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back in a second. In case you haven't noticed, the whole world is spinning out of control. But we are not surprised because many of the things taking place were prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. That's why we want to offer you a very special subscription to our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, that will keep you on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy. Stay informed on prophetic world events. Follow the nuclear threats from Russia and Iran, China's march to world domination, the likelihood of another global pandemic, the rise of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, war in the Middle East, the UFO phenomenon, and the latest technology preparing the world for the mark of the beast. With your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you will receive 12 issues of the magazine in either print or digital format. You will also receive 10 bonus DVDs that feature in-depth teaching on the ancient book of Enoch, Heaven and the New Jerusalem, the biblical case for the rapture, a look at how God put the gospel in the stars, what really happened at the Tower of Babel, and Ezekiel's prophecy on the battle of Gog and Magog. This special offer is available anywhere in the United States with free shipping included. Don't wait. Pick up the phone right now and call the toll-free number on your screen or visit us at prophecywatchers.tv. Stand with us today and help us take the message of Christ's soon return to the whole world. Well, we're back. I I hope you do avail yourself of our magazine, monthly magazine, The Prophecy Watcher. We try to cover uh, items that everybody else kind of leaves behind. We, We sort of look a little deeper and talk about Bible prophecy exactly as you are doing. And uh, thanks for for, uh, sharing your time with us today. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's just wonderful being here. So, where do we go from here? Marking the Masses by Tom Hughes. So, all right, well, I'll pick it up from there. So, if we look at, I'll make this quick, because there's so many other things I want to share. Okay. So, with, you, you go back, 1844, Samuel Morse, Morse code, right? He, the first words ever transmitted were, what God hath wrath, Numbers chapter 23, verse 23. First thing he ever did. So what happened when Samuel Morse, Morse Code did that, prior to that, you had boats sailing across the ocean to take messages. Yeah. Uh, people hiking across mountains and, and walking massively long distances or going horseback. Samuel Morse comes along, all of a sudden the world becomes smaller. And you started to see this transition towards what will become uh, the globalist system. Not that Samuel Morse had any bad intention. I'm convinced he had all good intentions by it. It's a great invention. But then you fast forward, you get the transistors, and then we know TV, radio. With everything that's developed, the world has become smaller and smaller and smaller. 
Uh, uh, now we look at languages and everything else. At the Tower of Babel, what was it? Split up the languages. Uh, what yes. do we have now? Now with technology, we don't have to worry about language barriers anymore. You look at the Tower of Babel, here's something else that's interesting. I do talk about it in the book rather extensively. You look at the Tower of Babel with Nimrod, he did not want the people scattering on the earth because he couldn't control them. Uh -huh. He needed to keep them. He also wanted to build, the Bible says, a tower to heaven. Well, the earth was flooded. The whole process, the, what, the, the conveyance of Nimrod is, listen, you stay here in my system, I will give you peace, I will keep, uh, keep you safe. Peace and safety was a message of Nimrod. We'll build a tower to the heavens, we won't be judged if there's a God. It's the whole avoidance of judgment, I'm your God, I will give you peace, I will keep you safety. Ever since then, man in his wickedness has wanted to build the Tower of Babel, and that is what this beast system is. Well, the wealthy and the power, uh, powerful are, are doing that very thing today, uh, you know, in a sense building a metaphorical tower to heaven with all those satellites that are up there, uh, not hundreds, but thousands of satellites that, that have, uh, I guess you'd say, wheels within wheels. They're doing things up there that nobody can even imagine. And, and one of the main things they're doing is tracking the global population in every conceivable way, which is exactly what you get in Revelation mm -hmm. when it talks about the Antichrist. He has a method, somehow we've all wondered, of controlling the masses. And now oh, yeah. we're, we're living in a time where we can see how he will do it. Yeah. Well, the technology give, is a, the tool, but something else that has to happen to bring about the system is the Antichrist is going to need to capture the hearts and minds of the people. And you enter in religion. You, you, there needs to be a religious system that these elites can use, because we know from Revelation chapter 17, you have the 10 kings, and what do they do? They use the religious system, the harlot, who sits on the beast, until they are done with her. And then, what do they do? They, out, they destroy her. In fact, Revelation chapter 17 tells us, once they use the religious system, they will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Hence, it's called the harlot system. It's not legitimate, it's not Christianity. But also, what, what happens with the harlot? The harlot is used for whatever the master wants. In this case, these 10 kings or the elite. So th this system is being built. In, so that we see the technological advance from 1961 until we are now. That means this other system has to be in play. Gary, it is in play and people are being conditioned. I think wokeism has a whole lot to do with uh, what is taking place right now. And wokeism isn't just gender ideology. It involves climate, it involves uh, the race baiting that we are witnessing. Yes. Uh, you start going through all the different aspects in it as a change. The ESGs, the Environmental Social Governance Scores, the whole social uh, scale is what is going to change this dynamic that the elite need. Well, Tom, all of us who have uh, taken a look at the history of Christianity uh, know about uh, what, what were called, quote unquote, the Great Awakenings. And there were several Great Awakenings in the past where the church had sort of fallen into disrepair and it was scattered. And then along came someone, and it, there were several someones who, who, who uh, said, look what we've done. We need to get back together again. We need to worship God and we need to build churches. And suddenly there was a, what was called a great awakening. Today, we don't talk about awakening. We talk about wokeism. Now, that's the total opposite. So wokeism is really, I, I would, I, I, I do go into the definitions and it involves yeah. so many different aspects of the social aspect of uh, the entire Western world, which I find interesting, Gary, when you look at biblically, the way I see the world being broken down in uh, during the tribulation period, I believe Antichrist rises out of a revived Roman Empire, the Western world. Some argue against it, that's fine. But we would all agree that 
out of this, and right now we see the conditioning, it's not just America, it's all of Europe, it's Canada, it's Australia, it's New Zealand, it's even Israel. This is affecting the entire Western world. And people are being, uh, I, I believe, brainwashing. Um, the confusion is massive. And so the whole thing is being set up for what is coming. Now, you mentioned in, in this book uh, uh, the, the well-known personality of Greta Sundberg, a little teenage girl. She's being used as a figure, and you, you speak about this in the book, and, and I think that's very timely. I mean, what's happening now is being portrayed as a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. The world that we love, in which we grew up, and, and all of us had so many high ideals, is now being called a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. It is. I believe it's a lie, what's happening right now. Uh, a couple of quick illustrations that I'll give you on the way here, right? Traveling here to Oklahoma, and uh, we're in the airport, and uh, there's a team of us coming. Well, one of the individuals got held up by TSA. What he said he did when he went up to the TSA counter to show the passport, he said he called the person a he, and the person said, I'm not a he, I'm a she. And then after that, it was, you got to go back to the counter. We, we still don't know why he was sent back to the counter. We thought that was interesting. That's one factor. So that's what's happening now in culture. Another one is we're in our hotel, getting ready to come here. I'm watching the news. All it was was extreme climate, extreme danger because of climate. That's all anybody hears. So if you're young, you would never know what a normal climate was. A normal climate has tornadoes, hurricanes, yes, heat waves, all my life. thunderstorms, has all of that. But now, every single person that's young has nothing before to compare it to. And all they hear is, wow, we, we're, we're living, we have to fix this. Yeah. So everything, and I deal with all of these different things in here. And this is part of the, uh, the methods that's being used to chip away at the foundation of civilization as we have known it. Wow. Tom Hughes, the book is Marking the Masses. Uh, tell you how you can get your copy right now. For those of you who have studied the prophecies of the Bible, you know we're watching the end times come alive. This new system of government control has the ability to micromanage the lives of everyone on the planet. We're rushing headlong towards a digital currency a digital ID, and a cashless society. And yes, it's all in the Bible, written thousands of years ago. The Mark of the Beast is clearly in sight, a system of total control instituted by the Antichrist at the midpoint of the tribulation. Contrary to recent speculation, the Mark has not arrived as of yet, but we can see the handwriting on the wall. It's coming soon. Pastor Tom Hughes has penned the most up-to-date work on the mark, how it's instituted, the technology behind it, how close it is to being perfected, how AI fits into the equation, and what happens to those who take this mark and declare their loyalty to the Antichrist. His book, Marking the Masses, is your guidebook to the future and a look back at the events that brought us to this precipice today. It's time the world woke up to Satan's evil plans and the minions who do his bidding. Prophecy Watchers would love to send you a copy of Marking the Masses. For your gift of $25 or more, we'll send you Tom's book and we'll cover the shipping anywhere in the USA. For our international friends, please note that additional shipping costs will apply. Just call the toll-free number you see on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.com. Now is not the time to be fearful. We're alive at the greatest moment in history, and we need to take this important information to the masses of people who don't know Jesus and will soon find themselves in the worst time in the history of the world, the tribulation. Tom Hughes will be one of the featured speakers at our ministry's upcoming Prophecy Conference in Norman, Oklahoma, October 5th through the 8th. We're almost sold out, but we're offering live streaming of the event to all our friends around the world. Go to WatchersWeekend.com for all the details. Thanks for watching today, and keep looking up. And we're back with Tom Hughes. We have uh, 
uh, just about about four minutes. And what can you say in four minutes, Tom? This book uh, has a lot of ideas. What's the, what's the central idea that you'd like people to know about? What time are we living in? Mm -hmm. Where are we? What should we be looking for? Uh, that is an excellent question. So you know, a lot of Christians that believe in Bible prophecy, the rapture, people that follow us um, say, well, I don't need to worry about that because I'm not going to be here for that. Well, I got news. We're in, we're living through this right now. And I believe we're going to be raptured before the tribulation. The problem is, it's the shaping of the beast system. So we're living in it. Why would Jesus tell us to watch and be ready? if he didn't want us to watch, hence prophecy watchers, right? That's what all of us are supposed to yeah. do. So in the book, it was dealing with all of these different things. We tell how, we tell why, and we project what's coming, where it's coming, and, the, and really for the believer, it's gonna strengthen them. For the seasoned prophecy teacher, they're going to go, I'm, I'm convinced, they're gonna look at this and say, I never made this connection before. Right, they will, I'm, and I'm, having read the book, and I did read it, <clears throat> and I'm glad I did. Having read the book, I do have some firm basis upon which to stand, view all these things that are happening. I, I, actually, it was kind of encouraging for me because I had a, a, a kind of a, hmm, now I, I, I'm understanding things a little better feeling. Yeah, yeah it's going to do that. For anybody that reads it, they're going to get it because it really does connect all the wise. It does. And it, that builds your faith. And for those who don't know the Lord, it's an excellent tool to just be able to give somebody because it not only has the gospel in it, it's also non offensive to a non believer. It puts <laughs> yeah. all the pieces in place to people who wonder, something weird's going on. I don't have answers. It answers them and it also answers them biblically without, without being offensive to them at the same time. And it leads them at the end to the place of salvation. Now, the book has a question written across the back cover. And here's the question. Should I fear the future? Mm. And I'm going to put it over in your court at this point in time. Uh, should we fear the future? Absolutely not. So what's happening right now? Proverbs chapter 29, Solomon writes, the fear of man is a trap, but it's the Lord who keeps them safe. And what is happening? We're not the fear mongers, the Klaus Schwab's all of the news media, oh, the world's gonna end, extreme climate, we, we must submit to what's coming. That's the fear mongering. What we do is we package it, go, no, they're saying these things. Let me tell you about the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming again and he's gonna call us home. The trumpet's gonna sound, man, we're gonna be in the presence of the Lord. But we are in the process of the setup and we wanna be well informed so our faith can be strengthened. So as Jesus said in Luke 21, when you see these things begin to take place, look up and lift up our head because our redemption draws near. Lift up our head, meaning with expectant joy because it's all happening just like the Bible says. Wow. Tom, great talking with you. I'm Gary Stearman. You keep watching. We are 